The Lockheed U-2 spy plane, nearly twice as wide as it is long, is one of the most distinctive aircraft in the United States Air Force and the most difficult to fly, earning it the nickname the Dragon Lady. The U-2's 63-foot-long, 19-meter-thin fuselage, two high-aspect unswept glider-like wings, and powerful engine are designed to propel the plane above 70,000 feet, 21 kilometers, and more importantly, to keep it there. The U-2 operates at such a high altitude with such a razor-thin margin between maximum speed and slow speed that pilots refer to its cruising altitude as Coffin Corner. There are missions that last for hours at a time. The aircraft's slender design makes it difficult to see at times. It is frequently covered in pods, spiky antennae, mysterious bulges, and nose cones that conceal the sensors, radar, cameras, and communications equipment required to carry out its missions. These various sensors can be plugged into the plane almost as if it were a model kit. One urban legend holds that such a bulge or pod containing a cloaking device, an electronic signal that makes it invisible to any radar. At 70,000 feet and above, the Dragon Lady still has the stratosphere largely to itself, just as it did on its first flight 65 years ago. The pilot is more astronaut than aviator at these altitudes. The pilot breathes 100% oxygen in the U-2's pressurized cockpit, wrapped in a bulky pressure suit with a large spherical helmet. Some of the features of the kit can still be found on modern spacesuits. The distinction between living and dying is blurred in such thin air. The pilot is constantly threatened by hypoxia, that is, a lack of oxygen, and altitude-induced decompression sickness. The U-2, like any plane, must fly fast enough to avoid stalling, but not so fast that the plane breaks up. A challenge for the U-2 pilot is that at 70,000 feet, the difference may only be a few miles per hour. An unintentional nudge on the controls could be disastrous. Close to the ground, the plane's mechanical controls, which were easy to manipulate at high altitude, now require Require muscle power to operate. The lightweight design of the U-2 causes it to float over runways, bounce back into the air if the landing is too hard, and is extremely sensitive to crosswinds. The weight-saving bicycle-style landing gear makes it difficult and time-consuming to maintain the plane's straight line and level wings as it slows down. Because visibility from the cockpit is so limited, the pilot must rely on instructions from another U-2 pilot driving a car that races onto the runway as the plane approaches. Approaches. These pursuit vehicles have reached speeds of up to 140 miles per hour, 224 kilometers an hour. The U-2 really attracts pilots who want to say, I fly the most difficult airplane in the inventory, says Greg Birdsall, Lockheed Martin's U-2 Deputy Program Manager. They put a pilot candidate in a trainer plane with a seasoned instructor pilot in the back seat to see how they react to the strange handling characteristics of the plane. Only about 10 to 15 percent of pilots who apply for the program are accepted. In an age of automation and algorithms, it's easy to think that spy planes and their right stuff pilots are a Cold War relic, but that's not the case. For the past 31 years, the U-2 has been intercepting speech or text, acquiring electronic signals, taking photographs, and capturing digital imagery using a special type of radar. The U-2 has also taken on new roles such as data relay. Because of its ability to fly high in the sky, it was in an ideal position to relay information from the battlefield to headquarters. It has outlasted rival planes and the surveillance satellites that were supposed to render it obsolete. The U-2s in operation today can carry nearly three times as much, twice as far, and fly for three times as long as the original aircraft. The 31 operational U-2s in the USAF fleet are about to receive a $50 million, 38.7 million pound update and a new mission, which could keep them flying for another 30 years. It may also see them face off against a drone whose existence has yet to be officially acknowledged. We are not discontinuing the U-2 program, and we are investing heavily to bring the U-2 into its new mission environment, says Lockheed Martin U-2 Program Director Irene Helly. There is no planned sunset date in this new era. Although not a relic, the U-2 is unmistakably associated with the Cold War. President Dwight D. Eisenhower's administration was shocked by the Soviet Union's nuclear capabilities in the 1950s. This was due to a lack of intelligence. The Soviet Union was a closed society that the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, found difficult to penetrate. 
Because there were no spies in the right places, the president needed a high-altitude spy plane to tell him what the Soviet Union was up to. And he needed it right away. Lockheed had exactly the people he needed in engineering genius Kelly Johnson and his team at the secretive Skunk Works. The legend of the Skunk Works began in 1943, when Johnson and his engineers designed and built the airframe of the USAF's first jet in just 143 days. They began work on this top-secret spy plane in late 1954. The plane had to be able to fly at altitudes above 70,000 feet, have a range of 3,000 miles, 4,800 kilometers, and carry 700 pounds, 212 kilograms of equipment. Only eight months later, on August 1, 1955, the U-2 took to the skies for the first time in a remote location in Nevada, now known as Area 51. It was clear that Johnson and his team had created something unique. The U-2 marks the beginning of a shift toward technical intelligence that is solving these intelligence problems through advanced technology rather than John le Carre-style spies on the ground, says Peter J. Westwick, director of the Aerospace History Project at the Huntington USC Institute on California and the West. He also wrote Stealth, The Secret Race to Create Invisible Aircraft, and he claims that the U-2 is really kind of the first big technological jump into technical intelligence. Today's U-2s can carry nearly three times as much, travel twice as far, and fly three times as long as the original aircraft. They were significantly updated again in the 1990s, and the process continues to this day. So far, the U-2 has ruled out at least five potential replacements. The first came from first-generation UAVs in the 1970s, that is, unmanned aerial vehicles. One of the most recent is the whale-like Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk, a high-altitude, remotely-piloted surveillance aircraft. The U-2 was more than 40 years old when it first appeared in 1998. To pay for the U-2's upgrade, 24 Global Hawks will have to be retired. With the Global Hawk out of the picture, the U-2 can move forward. Better avionics, a touchscreen cockpit, which can be used with a pressure suit, and a new mission computer will be added to the plane, allowing it to run the new Open Mission System, OMS. OMS, which is similar to the Android system found on your smartphone, will allow aircraft such as the U-2 to communicate easily with the computer systems of tanks, ships, aircraft, satellites, and even cyber weapons. The fact that the U-2 can serve for another 30 years is a testament to the genius of the people who designed the plane. Ellie says, When we first started rolling out new versions of the plane, it was designed to have an excess of power and space, and the modular way it was redesigned allows us to constantly upgrade it or equip it to serve different types of missions. Within weeks or months, we can go from concept to demonstration flight and then field testing. The U-2's experience has been advantageous, Helly says. It has a proven high-altitude performance. There's also an acknowledgement that its airframes are still essentially teenagers. They have about 80% of their design service life remaining. Manned platforms are also much better than computers at dealing with surprises. When it comes to space and other types of surveillance capabilities, they rely on extensive planning to provide the information required. In contrast, the U-2 is always available and ready to go at any time. That's all for today, guys. If you liked our video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the thumbs up. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of any new upcoming videos. See you in the next one.